could even say, what would you tell people in a time like this? Would you tell them trust in your emotional instincts to a certain degree with a certain element of caution uh, because they're probably telling you something important? Or would you say, come over to a sort of rational side and try to tap into that side that allows you to act in, a, in, in the most effective way? Well, let's broaden it for, beyond just listening to the government and doing what they want. But mm -hmm. Here's what I am trying to tell myself and sharing with my friends. And it's general advice for when we're um, thinking about any risk, whether we're over worried mm -hmm. about it or under worried about it. The first message is we're thinking more with our emotions. <laughs> mm. I, yeah. I like to quote Ambrose Bierce from the Devil's Dictionary, who wrote, the brain is only the organ with which we think we think. Yeah. Right? So then the next thing is, thinking mostly with your emotions can feel right, but lead you into mistakes, mm. which is kind of obvious, regardless of your position on the risk, you know, what you think about GMOs or COVID or nuclear power or anything. Thinking with your emotions instead of carefully can get you into trouble. That's generally appealing. Haven't offended anybody yet. The next thing I say is, because the brain wants to do this, you know, jump to conclusions and use our emotions more than reason, the best way to counteract that is to stop. Yeah. Pause for effect, right? Stop the conversation in your brain between emotions and reason, where reason is losing, which gives reason more of a say. The mm. first and loudest voice in the conversation is emotion. Butt in. <laughs> Butt in literally with a pause in the interest of making a good choice. That, that's what I tell my friends and myself. The goal here is to make the healthiest choice. Do I go out and shop? Should I wear gloves? These are all choices about my own health and safety. I better make them as intelligently as I can. And if I make them without thinking off the first emotional response, it might not be the best choice. So stop, think about things a little extra than normal, mm. okay? Which then brings reason more into the conversation. You know, the cognitive scientists, Kahneman and others, and, and well before him coined this as a dual systems theory or dual process theory. Have you heard that phrase? I have heard the phrase, yeah. Okay, so there's system one and system two, and that's what we've been talking about. And system two is the takes longer, is harder, we don't want to, but comes up with, you know, I keep patting my prefrontal cortex here, comes up with more thoughtful choices. Just stopping gives it a little bit more say. And there's a, a final step. Question any information that you're getting as to its reliability. Not just its veracity, do I trust them or not, Mm. But is that person likely to know? Yeah. Right? Because I get lots of tweets from my friends who they're on my side and all of these groups, right? That's why they're in all of my feeds. But, you know, I got a tweet today from um, uh, an art restorer about a new medicine for COVID. You know, all I have to do is stop a little bit and think, well, maybe that's not her field. But yeah. I have to stop to do that. And then after you stop, just ask yourself, what's the veracity and the reliability and the trustworthiness of the information? And all of that does is let's reason have more of a say. And you're going to get mm. closer to a balanced conversation between feelings and reason. You can't wipe reason, um, emotion out. It's got a pretty mm. loud voice. But you can give reason more of a say if you work at it. And the reason to work at it is for survival. You make yeah. healthier choices. There's a good reason to do this effort. Yeah, 